Hey guys, I'm back. So I had a question about um, somebody asking me about my composting system. How do I do it? And I'll explain. So compost is basically the process of natural material, um, leaves, uh, weeds, uh, food scraps, um, grass breaking down and going back into its um, a form that is rich in nutrients to be able to be used for growing your plants. Okay, that's basically what it is. Now, you can do this several ways. A lot of people will show you make a pile and just dump everything on a pile and the, the weight and the heat will um, add up and that's how your stuff will, will compost. That's absolutely correct. Um, I've tried it that way and that has worked for me as well. There's other things called tumblers you can buy. You put the stuff in and it's like a big handle or crank or a wheel that you roll. And it's the, the idea is you have it, uh, the compost will be sitting in one place. And then as you keep moving it, it kind of like stirs up the pile, which gets it nice and hot and get it going. I've tried that as well. Had some success with that as well. But what... Um, the method that I use now is kind of the lazy man's um, composting system. So basically, I have my favorite containers, which is the HDX um, Tough Rugged um, Totes. This is a 55 gallon. Now, what I grow in are 27 gallons. This is a 55 gallon, right? And what I do is I drill a million holes in the top all through the sides every single side and at the bottom holes everywhere just like that right now I don't drill the big holes like I would drill like if I was going to plant something in there because the idea of this is when you put your food scraps in um, when it starts getting hot outside, I want the heat to remain inside of here, okay? But when those gases and stuff are forming and stuff like that, I want the holes are basically like um, ventilation and they let out the gases, but they also allow some air flow to come in to actually help the process along, okay? So that's basically what I do. I purchase that about three years ago still strong it's faded the top is faded but the plastic has not degraded at all it's amazing this one i just bought because this one was full of fresh good to go compost but i needed an empty one that i can move the good compost in and then use this one for the making the fresh compost so in here you will see this is fresh compost this is what it looks like after the fact <clears throat> after your stuff breaks down that's what it looks like it looks just like dirt but it's not and you'll see like stuff like that there's eggshells in here um, You'll see some um, perlite and stuff that's in here because I also like reuse my, um, if I grow flowers or something like that in the house or in the front steps, I'll have, you know, I'll dump those things in here as well. But this is basically it. It's been in here. It's been sifted. I showed, showed you guys the video for my sifter. I put the sifter on top. I take the stuff that's halfway good, put it on, shake it. All the good stuff falls. The rest of it that hasn't broken down all the way, I put back in there to let it break down. Now, what goes into your compost system? You want food scraps, leaves, weeds, all of those things can go into here. Think of it like this, greens and browns, okay? Greens, and actually, when you when I say greens and browns, I don't want you to think color. Think about chemical processes, okay? So basically, greens 
will give off mostly nitrogen. Browns will give off mostly carbon. What you're doing is you're putting in nitrogen or greens and you're putting in carbons and though that combination of nitrogen and carbon produces a um, chemical reaction that kind of heats up things, make it actually hot. When those things get really hot, the heat breaks down the, um, the, the, the stuff that you have in there and then eventually it turns into that goodness okay so um, things that are greens greens will be food scraps greens will be uh, dead grass dead um, weeds um, or fresh cut grass whatever it is um, coffee those used coffee grounds and stuff like that all of that is um, considered greens what are considered browns browns would be your leaves um, cardboard paper um, uh, what's the uh, wood chips and all of those things like that that is what you would call a brown you got to have the right combination of browns and greens and that process will keep it going so in here that chemical process of the greens and browns are already kicking off but on top of that i have this container here that's locking in all that heat and only a little bit of the heat is being able to expel through those little holes but basically everything else in there keeps this, this thing hot and then therefore it makes the compost process now if you wanted to do something like this the best first thing you would do is draw all your holes and then you would put in a layer of dirt or compost down at the bottom here, okay? Now, let me show you how I do mine. So if you see in here, you see there's a, some compost that's already in here. Now what this compost is, is I grew potatoes last year. Now, um, I remember watching a video way back saying you shouldn't use potato soil all over again because it can contain disease and it used to freak me out. So I used to dump it somewhere and I never used to use it in my garden again. But I stopped doing that and what I started doing was saying I'm going to use that um, potato compost to be my starter compost and then that way after a year of this thing heating up any bacteria or anything that's bad that's in that potato compost should die from the heat and then therefore I can keep using it so what I do is I put a layer down at the bottom then you put your food scraps in and I just kept dumping all kinds of food scraps food scraps food scraps food scraps and then once it gets to a certain height I'll put these this is um, browns, right? Some more. So I had a layer of browns, and then I would add more food scraps, food scraps, food scraps, food scraps. And then this time, yesterday, I dumped a whole nother bucket of um, uh, potato compost in there. You don't need to do this. Once you got that layer down at the bottom, just keep adding food scraps, food scraps, food scraps, then add a layer of browns. Now, what you want to do. For example, if you got a leaf, now this to break down takes a little while, right? But when it's broken up into smaller little pieces, it actually like something like this and you just break this thing up, it actually breaks down faster. So breaking these leaves down, grinding them up, then putting them in there speeds up your process. Normally, what else I would use in here would be shredded paper. Shredded paper go is a great thing. And you just sit it in there. And in my system, I close the lid, let it go. In a week or two, I will come out here and turn it. So I'll use like a big garden fork and I'll just turn it all over. So let me show you guys something. So you can see stuff that's underneath here. That's a piece of a uh, cauliflower. I got cabbage stuff down in here. I got all kinds of stuff down here. I got parsnips, you know, all these things that's in there. And that's how that goes. And that's essentially it. The only other thing I add, because I'm cool, 
and this is something that you guys can also use. So out here, I have a um, fire pit. Um, what's in there now is uh, my old branches from, they used to be tomato vines. And eventually I'll burn this all up. When this all burns up, there'll be ash left. That ash, I will sweep up, dump in my compost bin. That ash is actually um, in the, it's, it's um, potash, it's potassium, not pot potassium, it's phosphorus. That phosphorus goes into my um, compost as well to be into my um, soil so that it's more nutrients that goes in. Um, another way to add phosphorus is from the grill. So if I'm cooking with natural, all natural um, charcoal briquettes that look like old wood or something like that, that when it breaks down, you can use that ash in your compost. That also adds the phosphorus. If you're smoking something and you're using cherry wood or hickory and it's just wood and you're using that and it burns up the ash that comes from that, you can also add that to your compost bin. Um, you don't want to use like the charcoal briquettes that's been, you know, processed, manufactured, the Kingsford ones or the ones that got the um, lighter fluid already in. You don't want to use stuff like that. Other things that you can use in the compost bin are like um, eggshells, which are great. I used to use eggshells in my compost bin, but now I started this year, I'm separating out all my eggshells and I'll be uh, showing you guys what I actually am going to start doing with my eggshells. But normally I would throw eggshells in here as well, but basically that's it. So um, hopefully um, you guys can get this. Listen, I always recommend having a compost bin because like, for example, all of my pots over here have fresh compost in them that came from what broke down in here last year. And I still, have a whole lot left so if I needed to top off my beds or anything like that I would actually dig here and I won't have to buy bags of stuff the only reason I bought those bags I had bought four bags because I was filling up these containers and I bought those five bags um, because they were on sale and because I was thinking about putting a um, raised bed right here so I would use the garden soil I would also use um, my own compost with some other things so when I get my um, built my raised bed there I'll be using my own compost now that's it now the last thing I want to tell you one thing that I do not do me personally I don't put weeds in my compost bin initially what I do is I pick the weeds then I'll just sit them on top here and let them dry out once they dry out and I know that they're dead then I'll add them I the reason why I don't like that because weeds have seeds in them and I don't want to a lot of times they have seeds in them and I don't want to have weed seeds all in my stuff. And then as soon as I start using it in my garden, all of a sudden it's growing up weeds all over the place. So I like to kill my weeds first, then let them get burnt up in the compost process. OK, guys, I hope this composting thing has helped you. Um, you don't need a 55 gallon. You can just get a small one like that and you can drill a bunch of holes in that one. Oh, 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 real quick. So this one has all the holes in it. The one that keeps my stuff does not have holes in it. The only place I drill holes in this one is at the bottom.
And the only reason I drill holes at the bottom is because sometimes if I was to leave this lid cracked, for example, and let's say it began to rain and I wasn't out here, if there were no holes in here, that water would get in here and just start to stink and get all kind of nastiness going on up in there. And so I like to have some holes in there just in case water gets in there and needs a place to to uh, to seek out and drain. The only other reason I put holes at the bottom is because they're sitting directly on the ground. Earthworms are going to want to come up and get up in there. OK, so I like earthworms in my stuff because they're going to eat and break down some more stuff. They're also going to leave their castings, which also makes this more fertile and awesome but generally no holes in the top for your finished compost holes everywhere for your unfinished compost let that thing heat up and set it and forget it all right peeps have any questions drop them below peace out